Alright guys, today's video, I want to do something a little bit different, I want to take the time to pay respects to my favourite handheld, Sony's one and only neglected child, the PS Vita. Let's go! I still remember how hyped I was about the impending release for the PS Vita before it launched. I would read every article about it, I would enter into lengthy discussions about it in the now defunct PlayStation community forums. I even got invited to a PlayStation Access event to actually go hands on with the device, while Sony laid on some free beer and snacks for our adult enjoyment. <clears throat> Those were the days. From the moment I played this little sucker, I fell in love. On that launch day, I managed to get my hands on various different titles like Super Stardust HD, I got a little bit of play on Uncharted, as well as playing Reality Fighters which at the time I must admit I found a little bit odd. <clears throat> anyway, I persisted with my pre-order and when launch day came around and I took delivery of my console, I got it with Wipeout. I quickly jumped onto the store and grabbed the Vita version of my favourite PS3 title which was Super Stardust. I actually love that game and I recommend it to anyone who hasn't played it. I was also very lucky that I managed to pick up a bonus copy of Uncharted by buying 99 pence DLC. So in America that's 99 cents. Basically there was a bug on the PlayStation Store at launch that if you bought a map pack that showed you hidden treasures in the game, rather than giving you that pack it actually gave you the entire game for 99 pence and you can be sure as hell that I took advantage of that little exploit. It was obvious from the start that this was a powerful bit of kit, but early on I started to notice something. No one had one. I would be playing it on the bus and I'd get the occasional, is that the new PSP? After a few times of being asked this, I just started saying yes, despite how dumb I felt saying it. It was around about this time I realised just how badly Sony had marketed the Vita outside of the Sony fanbase, as people just didn't know about the console or what it was capable of. In fact, more people seem to know about its overpriced memory cards than what kind of gaming experience it could provide. So while I was enjoying games like Uncharted and Wipeout, all I was reading about was how retail stores were no longer giving shelf space to Vita consoles or games as it was performing so poorly. Then the death bell rung. The PS4 was announced and what little momentum the Vita, Vita did have with fans was instantly sucked away as the new big shiny toy was looming on the horizon. Sadly, this didn't only seem to affect fans, as little by little Sony would withdraw support for the Vita until it stopped supporting its own console. Now, to put this into perspective, the Vita released in Japan on December 2011 and its last big first party title came out at the end of 2013. It's not even two full years dropped by your parents after two years, not even two years, now that does sting. Despite giving up on making games for the console, Sony did bring out two new pieces of hardware, one a little bit better than the other. First off, we got the hardware revision in the form of the Vita Slim that ditched the beloved OLED panel in favour of an LCD and despite, despite what many people say, it's not a huge difference and the things you gain from the Slim made it worth it in my opinion. For example, the OLED on the original Vita did have some issues as OLED technology was a lot newer at that point in time. There was issues with kind of ink blotching on the screen where if you looked in really really dark scenes you could see what almost looked like a blotchy ink pattern on your OLED panel. This didn't affect you in colourful screens and gameplay but once you had noticed that you couldn't get away from seeing it and it, and it if you're someone like myself, it, it really did bug you and it could play on your mind. They also had issues with burning, which I didn't personally experience, but I know some people did experience this with the early OLED panels. Remember guys, at this point, OLEDs hadn't penetrated the smartphone market like they have now. Back then, the only experience you really had with them was if you had a Samsung mobile phone. So they were fairly new at that point. The Slim did have a better battery life, and the biggest improvement, from my point of view anyway, was the fact that the new model ditched the proprietary connection for its charger in favour of a micro USB port, meaning pretty much any old mobile phone charger you had lying around was good enough to charge your device. And to this day, I don't have an original charger for my Vita anymore. I just use whatever mobile phone charger I've got lying around and it's so easy to charge the thing. 
The other bit of hardware they released was the Vita TV. Now, on paper, a way to play your Vita games on TV sounded awesome. The only issue with it was some of the biggest and best games were unplayable due to the fact that they required some touch elements to play, so Sony never whitelisted the games to play on a Vita TV. To add insult to injury, people who used an exploit to play the unwhitelisted games found out that most of these games were deemed that were deemed unplayable actually played absolutely fine as there was secondary stick elements that allowed you to use some of those touchscreen functions. Obviously not all of them worked perfectly, but big games like Uncharted worked absolutely fine using a control pad. So, after these two new bits of hardware, Sony went very quiet on the Vita front, but luckily for Vita fans, third parties would continue to support the Vita for a good few years, with indie developers in particular really supporting the beloved handheld for years to come, and securing a lot of loyal fans along the way due to the support they provide the beloved handheld. If Nintendo has shown one thing to gamers with its Switch, it's that if you support it, they will come, and fans just wish Sony had even shown the Vita a fraction of the attention that Nintendo has shown the juggernaut that is the Switch. The Vita is still a console loved by many, and still used a lot today thanks to custom firmware and enterprising modders who keep finding new ways to extract extra uses out of this fantastic little bit of technology. The Vita having physical buttons makes it a more natural fit to emulate the likes of Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo and PS1 titles than someone's mobile phone, and it's something the console excels at, and it up emulates up to the PS1 with ease. When you start to hit the N64, which is notoriously trouble to emulate for, you can start to see some issues. So with this one guys, I would say everything up to the PS1 is absolutely fine on your Vita. Models also added the ability for you to capture your gameplay via OBS on PC, which is something you could never do out of the box, as Sony cancelled any form of TV out for the Vita. Models even found a way for you to overclock your Vita so that native Vita titles run even better than Sony ever allowed you to run them on your console. They can improve things like frame rate and even resolution because some games actually ran at a lower resolution on Vita and then they were upscaled to match the screen resolution. But with some of these mods you can actually run at a higher native rev resolution making the game look a lot sharper and better. I just want to sign off this video by saying, Vita, I loved you, and it's sad your creator never felt the same way. Thanks for watching guys, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!